it's a pleasure to be here and I'm so grateful to Ron and everyone that contributes to this amazing series. Uh, and I'm also gonna start with a poem from Alaska Quarterly Review, a journal that I was so honored to be published in, as Heather said, a legend, or as I, we say in grad school, right? Uh, a dream journal, <laughs> always a dream journal. And then I had two poems in there and I was absolutely thrilled. Um, this one is from Any God Will Do. Uh, it's an erasure poem. I had this idea to write a chapbook of erasure poems from uh, novels in the Western canon. I got, and I started with Madame Bovary, which is this poem. <laughs> and uh, I got through a couple more and then I tried to tackle Hegel's phenomenology of spirit and things got really derailed. And then, so I only, <laughs> I only had a couple of, not a chapbook, but Madame Bovary was one of the first one I started with and it was published in a key work. And it's from the translation by one of my favorite poets and writers, Lydia Davis. Madame Bovary. Look at those pretty daisies. Oracles enough for any village girl who happens to be in love. Why rant against the passions? Aren't they the only beautiful thing on earth? The source of heroism, enthusiasm, poetry, music, the arts. How bored I am, how bored I am. A surgeon's caresses are like the oil with which he greases his scalpel. When I lost my poor dear late lamented, I would go down into the fields to be all alone. I would fling myself down under a tree. I would weep. He liked hard cider, a rare leg of lamb, Gloria's well beaten. She would think of all the wild emotions unknown to her. Why hadn't she seized that happiness when it was offered? She would end by asking him to give her some tonic for her health and a little more love. Would this misery last forever? She grew pale and had palpitations of the heart. At other times, burning hotly with that secret flame, she would open her window, breathe in the cold air, and looking at the stars, long for princely loves. You're ungodly. You have no religion. A convulsion flung her back on the mattress. Here I am. I'm yours. I, I just enjoyed doing that so much because of the shape shifting of the narrative voices and obviously just writing a erasure poem from a 18th or 19th century novel is just <laughs> A delightful poetic conceit. Um, I'm going to read a few poems from a book that's forthcoming in September from a press in Montreal called Vehicule Press. Uh, it's called Hallelujah Time. Um, and uh, yeah, these three poems are, are from that book. Uh, this first one, it's kind of a little bit of a mishmash between a complicated love poem, lapsed Catholicism, and teaching college composition. And But it could also be a lapsed teaching composition poem, lapsed love poem, or uh, complicated Catholicism. I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> it's called Lear Exquise. I've hurt you. I've loved you. I vacuumed all the rooms. I have no idea what became of us, yet the possibilities for happiness are endless. Once when my lover betrayed me, I greeted him at the door with a knife. Now I am on my haunches, unvalued and unused. Am I to be blamed for wanting absolution? Am I to be blamed for keeping what I conjure in a vial of formaldehyde beside my bed? Admiring crowd, death is my downfall. My students fail repeatedly to deploy the correct conjunctive adverbs in everyday speech. Consequently, I fold my napkin into a perfect square. Henceforth, the night ends so quickly, bringing forth the vulgar day. When images become inadequate, I shall be content with silence. When images become inadequate, I separate the chaff from the wheat. I feel I've learned so little here. The soul pressed flat is matter unsexed. The heart pressed flat is meat. This next poem is, uh, I've translated a book of poetry from a Quebecois poet named Samuel, 
Samuel Mercier uh, called The Warriors, which in French is Les Années de Guerre. And uh, it's about the post 9-11 landscape and the beginning of the war on terror, among other things, including Quebecois politics. And I took the conceit of the kind of borrowing the title and thinking more about the war on terror and not knowing who or what the enemy is or where they're coming from. And the, you know, the whole war on terror and domestic terrorism and the idea of the enemy you know, conceivably also being within and not just in an us, them, uh, an us versus them, you know, binary or dichotomy. So it's kind of about a relationship, but also about uh, where do we look for uh, the enemy or the friend? Les années de guerre. The past, yes, the past. Who was I then? My inner voice is getting kinder, but it's an enemy territory, a dueling body and mind. Life is poignant and cruel. Why are you staring at me? I'm not a clock, digital or analog. I'm a marsupial born in water, walked over by Jesus in Galilee. But who's counting his awesome miracles? I was happy peeling potatoes in the army, happy with my ration of butter and bread. Dramatis personae all rise. Court is now in session, presided over by your honor and deed and name. Time is the essence of money, which is why I fail at both. Depth over breadth is the gospel I hiss infelicitously to the world. The thought you have after the thought you lose is the saddest thought ever. And yet hope is the thing with feathers that perches atop the combat vehicle. Who reminds repetition of repetition? What is the antidote to territorialism, binding men to evil like glue? Me? I reject all domestic certainties. I've never wanted to be anywhere but here, in the still pool of total war, caught in the crosshairs with you. And I'll just read a couple more. This, uh, this one is, was a, a challenge at a party. Someone asked me what my favorite literary device was. Um, and I said, a tautology. And they said, why don't you write a poem about it? And I, this is what happened. <laughs> It's called Hard Night. Then came with time a sort of deadening. Then came the birds that woke me, disabile, while I was dreaming of satiety, gaiety, the blood of my boot black heart. People are people, but the world, the world feels elegiac somehow now. If I perish, I perish, said Esther. And if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. It's deja vu all over again. The undecideds cannot make up their minds and our nation must come together to unite. Part of the problem is lexicon, the different ways we describe or is that experience, the mistral breeze. A tautology is true by definition. It has no possibility of being false. We ask from God what we ask of art to be changed. We ask to be more than a frantic bleats enduring a steady rhythm of whips. What is there to say of earth? It seeks redress, but silently. Who can translate the forked tongue of the plow, the lathe, the scythe? I am not a man-made implement. This, the autobiography of a life. I never sent it to that friend who challenged me to write a poem about my favorite literary device, and I should. <laughs> um, I'll just read two very short ones from the, my most recent chapbook. It's called That Tree Is Mine from a, um, um, a Nova Scotia press called Gasparo that I was delighted to publish with. Uh, I, this poem is called Romanticism. It's just a few lines long. It, it was inspired by thinking about John Keats training as a medical doctor while also being kind of, you know, a paragon of romanticism <laughs> and how that would affect his way of thinking about the heart. Romanticism. The heart does its own bidding, is more than just a pump. But, needs, but it needs a storyline beyond failure, triple bypass, attack. The bathers don their sealskin caps, dive into ice cold water. And thus the heart is electrified, awoke. Without pacemakers, millions would be dead. Art wields a scalpel, 
Silence wields a knife. I place a wreath of antlers in your hair, declare us forest and wife. And the last one I'll read is called Testament. Again, going back to that lapse of solicism <laughs> and my desire to believe. <laughs> Testament. I want to turn the night into a feast. I want rosemary flecked potatoes, seafood paella, and chilled sorbet. I want chandeliers on every fence post, signaling disposable income or the sudden liquidation of assets. I will look into hair extensions, eyelash extensions, and fake nails. The silicone float, sink, or sail. Draperies made of gold damask, floors of old growth redwood, aquariums filled with exotic fish. I want a mirage, but unpeopled, without staff. When it dissolves, I will be alone again, a believer at last. Thank you so much. <laughs>